Finally, AMD launched a new set of Ryzen CPUs. It only took them a year and a half, but we finally have the new, wait, fourth generation? But that, that can't be right, right? Wait, is, is this the thing that they did with the 1600 AF then? Oh, oh no? Oh. Well, that's embarrassing. You see, this little guy is the Ryzen 5 4500 a three-year-old CPU in two-year-old branding that launched in April of 2022. I say a three-year-old CPU because this chip is based on the Zen 2 architecture launched back in mid-2019. It is a six-core, 12-thread, 4.1 gigahertz boost clocked chip that's labeled as a fourth generation CPU, as in the generation that didn't exactly happen except for mobile chips. Although that's actually rather fitting because the 4500 is based on their Renoir mobile and uh, CPU and APU architecture, not their desktop third generation Matisse design. That means that this chip does not support PCIe Gen 4. And that's actually a pretty big deal, as what I can descri only describe as a hilarious self-own. If you were to pair this new budget CPU with AMD's latest budget-focused mobile-derived graphics card, the RX 6500 XT, you'd find yourself uh, pretty hamstrung by that card's use of just four PCIe lanes which were intended to run at PCIe Gen 4 speeds, but on this CPU, well, they would cap at um, literally half that bandwidth. Luckily, this chip is cheap enough that you might actually be able to, well, spend a few quid extra on a better, higher-end graphics card. In fact, this whole system from CyberPower, complete with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3600 RAM, 500 gigabytes of NVMe SSD space, an RTX 3060, and even a bundled keyboard, mouse, mousepad, and headsets, will only set you back 899 pounds, which actually doesn't sound like too bad of a deal. But let's take a look at the system and see how it performs and see how it compares to some of its, well, competitors, its rivals. Let's start with gaming and we'll start off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider running at 1080p at high settings. The 4500 comes in at the bottom of the chart here. Uh, behind literally everything else, including the now two-generation-old i5-10400F, and by a pretty reasonable margin. Exactly 20 FPS difference in the average in-game FPS, which is a significant drop, as is the 25 FPS difference in the CPU render average performance too. Microsoft Flight shows the same pattern, with our 4500 running around 20 FPS behind the back, uh, the rest of the, the, the pack, and 10 FPS behind the similar Zen 2 based 3600X. This drop is also more likely to be noticeable too, as getting over 100 FPS is a you know, great experience, versus getting 80 is still fine, but it's easier to spot and feel than going from 140 down to 120. This is also the only chip to drop below 60 FPS in the 1% lows, which again is something to definitely keep in mind. CSGO is a great game for testing CPUs, as it really leaves nowhere to hide for the slower chips. While 230 FPS is still perfectly, perfectly fine, even the 3600X can muster almost 100 FPS more and the Bigger Brother 5600X nets well over double the performance, how even almost double the 1% low performance as well. Cyberpunk shows a much tighter spread, especially for the average performance, with the 3600X and 4500 functionally tied. Then, around a 10 FPS gap to the, the sort of rest of the pack. The main standout here, though, is the 1% low figure on the 4500, which is the lowest in the, the whole group, the whole test, by about 5 FPS, meaning while the same average FPS 
you know, it might be the, the same for the 3600 and the 4500, you're likely going to have a, a, a less ideal, a bit of a, a choppier, a, a less smooth experience and more prone to, to dips and hitching on the 4500 instead. As for Fortnite though, that's a pretty similar story with the 4500 still at the bottom of the charts, around 6 FPS behind the 3600X or about 25 FPS behind the top end 12600K. The 1% lows are equally the lowest, although the overall spread for all of these figures is actually fairly tight, making it a much more reasonable experience, especially compared to some of the previous results. And finally for gaming, in Watch Dogs Legion, again it's a, very much the same story. The 4500 is in last place, the 3600X isn't much that, isn't that far further ahead, then the, the rest of the pack kind of takes leaps and bounds upwards from there. As with all of these results, the performance from the 4500 is perfectly adequate, but it does very clearly lag behind, in some cases quite significantly, behind its peers. In CPU specific benchmarks, like Cinebench R23, the single thread of performance pretty much matches its gaming performance, where you get a, a hair less performance than the, the 3600X, although interestingly, they both beat the i5-10400F here, I suppose likely thanks to stronger sort of single core boost characteristics in the AMD chips, but in the, the multi-threaded sort of results, again, it's the same story. The 4500 is a hair slower than the 3600X, which is a reasonable amount slower than the, say, newest 5600X, and especially the two new 12th gen Intel i5s. In Blender and the BMW scene, the 4500 ever so slightly outperforms the 3600X, and even the i5 11400F by just a couple of seconds. The higher-end 5600X still handily outperforms the, well, most of the pack, uh, or at least most of the, the older chips, uh, and only the oldest 10400F sort of suffers towards the back of the pack. In the gooseberry scene though, the 4500 slips back down to the sort of more expected second to last position, with a considerable gap to the next fastest, which is the i5 11400F, which is over a minute faster. In the Adobe CC suite, using Puget Bench, Premiere Pro shows again a pretty similar setup with the 4500 being second to last, albeit with a fairly tight grouping of the scores across the board. Only the uh, 12600K is kind of out in the lead by a considerable margin. It still lags, uh, the 4500 still lags behind the 3600X, although it does outperform the 10400F somewhat as expected. After Effects is the same, although the relative gap to the 3600X actually increases with even the 11400F taking a considerable victory over the 4500. Finally, in Photoshop, the 4500 actually comes in fully last place here, with the newer 1200F offering 40% more performance and the 5600X netting a near 50% higher score. Interestingly, the 4500 seems to be a, a more efficient core than the desktop or its desktop Zen 2 counterpart, the 3600X, as it only reported around 62 watts of total package power consumption during the Blender Gooseberry render, compared to around 79 watts on that 3600X. So for gaming with an RTX 3060, well, it's hardly the end of the world, you're definitely leaving some performance on the table by using a 4500. In some cases, that might be a, a fairly, or a pretty considerable amount of, of performance too, or at the very least just of worse smoothness and, and sort of, you know, enjoyability of your, your gaming performance. Uh, for productivity tasks, you are definitely giving up a considerable amount of performance compared to especially one of the higher priced 5600X or even a 12400F, which I think nicely brings us on to the pricing for these chips. The 4500 seems to be listed for about £120 versus more like 210 for the 5600X or about 165 for the 12400F. That is a fair 
difference. Although I would argue that that performance, uh, the performance difference does help justify those price tags, especially as, as time goes on, as you upgrade your graphics card, as games get more CPU dependent, even things like direct storage come about and come become popular as well. Although it is worth noting that the 4500 isn't the only new CPU that AMD launched. They recently, or they at the same time, announced the 5500 and 5600, both of which are based on the newer Zen 3 architecture, and support PCI Gen 4, and that 5500 is listed for about £140-£145, which is a much tighter gap to the 4500, and is likely to give you a considerable amount uh, sort of better longevity, thanks to the PCIe Gen 4 connectivity, and likely potentially better performance in games today as well. If you'd rather buy a pre-built PC like this one from CyberPower, they do offer the 5500 for £30 more or 5600 for £67 more, both of which I would consider worthy upgrades if you are going to pick one up. And if you are picking up this exact system, I would say it's a decent shout. It's definitely well built. The parts are what I would definitely call uh, more budget oriented. When you have an MATX motherboard, uh, MATX B450 motherboard, a DRAMless 500 gig SSD as your only storage, uh, the AMD Wraith stock cooler, and fairly budget case and fans, and it's relatively loud, not distractingly, but certainly louder than uh, some of the other systems that I've, I've checked out. Uh, and I would also mention that the motherboard doesn't have any heat sinks on its VRMs, which means that dropping in something like the higher end 142 watt chips, like the 5800X or higher, likely won't be your best option in terms of uh, future upgrades, so do keep that in mind. Although, of course, when you are buying those sorts of pre-built systems, you can often use their configuration tools, which you certainly can for CyberPower, to swap, say, what motherboard you have to maybe a slightly higher end one that does support better upgrades. Although actually speaking of upgrades, it is worth noting if you are picking up a Ryzen based system right now, it's not expected that there are going to be any future chips launched for this platform. So the only upgrades that you'd be able to do are chips that are currently you know, available, currently out in the market, which don't get me wrong. Uh, going from say a, a 4500 or 5500 to a 5800X, 5900X, especially if you're doing more productivity work, will be a, a fairly significant performance advantage for you. And even in games, you should see at least a little bit, but you're not gonna get any new chips for this platform. So just keep that in mind. But with all of that blabbed about, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of the 4500? Is it a chip that you would pick up yourself? Uh, do you think that it is AMD just sort of dumping old stock of their old APU chips that they couldn't fit with integrated graphics or something and then, you know, just want to push them out the door just before we get a new refresh? Or is it, you know, great that we're seeing, you know, uh, better competition in the, in the market? I mean, I would argue that they can be both things, but either way, let me know in the comments down below. Also, let me know what you think of the system as well. And if you want to check out the system, I'll leave a link to CyberPower in the description, as well as a link to the CPUs themselves, if you want to check those out too. If you want to see more videos like this one from me, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. I'll leave plenty more videos on the end cards you can check out as well. Maybe take a look at the uh, i5-12600K versus the i5-6600K. I think that was an interesting uh, multi-year comparison. Uh, or uh, you can also support the channel too with the uh, other links in the description. In fact, you can do so directly through YouTube itself with the YouTube join button and become a YouTube member and get some cool rewards for doing so. Or you can support on Patreon instead if you'd rather. There's also links to uh, other affiliate links and uh, merch hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other designs I made myself. And yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to stop now. This is like the eighth time I filmed this because my microphone broke. So uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video.